Today we are going to talk about good cameras to start your adventure with photography and videography and we are going to focus only on full frame cameras, okay? So there, there's a lot of good cameras to start with, but today only full frame. So we will, on this list we'll cover some cheap entry level cameras and we'll talk about pros and cons and we will also cover some more expensive cameras that I do recommend if your budget allows you to spend a little bit more and get a really, really universal tool. So let's start with the cheapest one on the list, which is still quite good for many people out there, which is Canon RP. Canon RP is a little bit old on that list, but it's definitely the cheapest one on that list. However, there are some advantages to that camera. One of those advantages is quite reasonable AF system. It's not great, it can get lost sometimes, but in most standard situations, it's doing just okay job, so you can really, really use it. The other thing is, if you want to help this AF system a little bit, you can always use touch autofocus, which works flawlessly on that camera. And talking about uh, touch system, in general, Canon has the best touch operating system on their camera, so you can basically do anything you want with just you know touching the screen and the like screen menu the touch screen menu is just the best of all like Sony Nikon and Panasonic competition and that's that's it the other thing is that the the, the colors out of the camera are pretty good and the sensor is quite okay it's not that bad but if you if you pair it with some good lens it can perform very well and you can use it even for professional uh, photo sessions however there are some limitations for videographers uh, like no 10 bit 4k no 60 frames per second 4k you are stuck with pretty basic video capabilities you can shoot 4k but there's no image in body image stabilization so if you want a stabilized 4k just invest in stabilized lens because the electronic image stabilization in Canon RP is just horrible. So just forget about using it. Just, just, just don't do it, okay? Because it will spoil your recordings. However, having said all that, if you are looking for some cheap full frame entry level camera and you want to run YouTube channel, you can still do it quite well. So it's, it's an okay camera. There are some limitations for sure, but for that price, it's hard not to recommend it and not to put it on that list. Uh, we are starting from worst to best, okay? So not worst to best, but from cheapest to more expensive and better cameras. Z5, Nikon, Nikon Z5. This is the second one on the list. And Nikon Z5 is, is an interesting camera. It's much better than Canon RP for sure, in many reasons. For example, dynamic range is better, but AF system, specifically after firmware updates, is pretty good. Video capabilities are just better. There's an option to record, to extend a recorder, so there's a lot of pros to that camera. So pretty good, uh, pretty good autofocus, good color straight out of the camera, uh, pretty nice performance in low light, little better dynamic range than Canon RP. However, there are some downsides. In general, Nikon system is pretty limited when it comes to choice of lenses, and lenses for Nikon are in general expensive. However, if you buy a Z5, please don't forget to buy it with kit lens, which is a pretty good standard zoom lens, and then you can invest extra and buy Viltrox lens, which is available for that mount, and Viltrox prime lenses for full frame are pretty good, and you should be fine doing even professional jobs with that setup. Next one on the list is old but still alive, Sony A7 Mark III. After all the years that passed since the, 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 the camera was released, it's still one of the best options when it comes to budget-friendly choices. And like the autofocus is the best on the list so far. Um, it has in-body image stabilization, it can record 4K in 8-bit, 4 to 2, so nothing spectacular, but this quality is pretty okay. It should be fine for many cr content creators. You can easily run YouTube channel on it. Uh, there's 4K, this is, uh, sorry, there's 120 frames per second in full HD, and it's a decent quality, full HD, 120 frames per second slow motion. So you can easily combine those two and most people won't see much of a quality difference between those two. So it's still a pretty good camera. The downside is 
uh, you cannot record anything better to external recorder just 422 but it doesn't make much difference in quality so pretty much you are stuck with 420 8-bit and that's what you get so that's the limitation of that camera the other thing is it's it can be a little bit slow sometimes not autofocus because autofocus is very responsive but some reactions to the things you click in menu can be a bit slow it's not a big deal but something to take into consideration which was solved in a7 mark IV, which we will talk about later but still you can buy this camera for a very 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 decent amount of money which is great because there's a lot of promotion cashbacks and stuff on that camera and it's still a very good system to to invest in because like in comparison with competition the um, the choice of lenses is just you know like <laughs> there's there's nothing to compare it to it's just the best choice of lenses out there you have 50 models of 50 millimeter lens and 35 models of 35 millimeter lens i'm joking but you know what i mean like there's so much you got you got sigma tamron viltrox whatever you think samyang and you have also those boutiques produce boutique producers of manufacturers of lenses so there's there's a huge variety so very good uh, system to enter and one of the things i want to mention is amazing dynamic uh, dynamic range of the sensor inside good low light performance and battery life is also amazing you can do whole day wedding on two fresh sony batteries there you go so it seems to be a really good choice first three top three cameras are just to come and then we will make some honorable mentions okay so number three is uh, panasonic s5 mark ii s5 is still a good camera so it's a little bit like third and a half <laughs> on on the podium but s5 mark ii has amazing image stabilization and much better autofocus performance than s5 uh, mark one when it comes to image stabilization it's just a little better but when it comes to autofocus it's a lot better on s5 mark ii so if you have this extra money to spare to spend then boom s5 mark ii is your thing it's basically the best camera to shoot handheld which is just amazing like you can really use it as a gimbal free setup and you're good uh, lenses panasonic lenses like this those 35 or 50 millimeter or 85 millimeter 1.8 they seem to be a little bit dark because it's just 1.8 so you may think oh those are like overpriced cheap lenses but there's nothing cheap in those lenses those are very durable very well made and they all look pretty much the same all all look the same and they have the same size of filter thread which is great because you can use only one filter for all those lenses that you buy from uh, Panasonic and those lenses are optically great. The other advantage is that Panasonic has a, the best kit lens to offer. 20 millimeter to 60 millimeter is a very universal lens and you may think 20 to 60 it will not perform very well and you are wrong there's a really good performance on that lens there's no pincushion on, on 60 uh, millimeter side of things and there's no barrel effect on 20 millimeter side of things so basically panasonic is a great choice and one more thing a lot of goodies for videographers so not mentioning 4k 60 frames per second and uh, a lot of goodies but you also have an open gate 4x3 aspect ratio of recording and that's just amazing because you can go vertical you can go horizontal whatever you like and the quality of image is great and the colors are the most natural out of the camera from out of all the systems we are talking about today so very good choice and they, that takes number three on number number two is like a real workhorse it's sony a7 mark IV. it's my make main camera so i know a lot about this camera but in general you have 40 40 frames per second no sorry 60 frames per second in 4k 10 bit 4 to 2 which is great of course crop factor is there but still it's it's an amazing quality 4k in 60 frames per second you also have 4k in 30 frames per second no crop factor you have very good 120 frames per second in full hd you have very very good image stabilization definitely not as good as in panasonic s5 mark ii but pretty good super responsive autofocus system and basically autofocus system is the best on a7 mark IV out of all those cameras and in general this is a super responsive camera still what remains true in a7 mark III remains true in a7 mark IV 
great battery life, an amazing selection of lenses. So basically, if you're thinking about a camera that maybe you don't necessarily need to love, like it's so beautiful and, and you know, like <laughs> retro or something, but something to work with, something to take everywhere and it won't fail you, Sony a7 Mark IV is the camera you want to look at, period. Number one, hmm, I had mixed feelings about it, but since long time, Canon cameras didn't steal my heart. Just, they're good, they're really good, don't take me wrong, I have nothing against Canon system. But R8, surprisingly, um, I fell in love with that camera, kind of, you know, <laughs> don't take it literally, but in general, it's a great camera. It's small, it's full frame, and it gives you a lot of goodies for very reasonable money, specifically from since some time from the, from the premiere just, uh, you know, passed. You can buy it a little cheaper with some promos on it, cashbacks and this kind of stuff. Anyways, long story short, you have a very good capable sensor with very good dynamic range, quite good low light performance. You have very good autofocus system. You have 4K 60 frames per second, 10 bit, 4 to 2. You have, um, you know, in, you have 4K, of course, 30 frames per second. You have, you know, this, this, this very high quality system, HQ system from Canon. And those uh, recordings compared, uh, combined with flat profile, uh, like log file, you know, log profile. That's what, I'm, that's what I'm trying to say here in my poor English is really amazing. So the quality that you get out of this camera is really good. Photographic, photography wise, it's also very, very good camera with very capable uh, autofocus system. Uh, and in general, it's a very good, all, very good camera to do all kinds of job and it's small and lightweight. Com combined with some of the small and lightweight uh, uh, zoom lenses like 24, 150 or 1530, it's a very, very capable setup and you can buy some cheap 35 or 50 millimeter from Canon that are very good and you are set. The only downside of that camera and the main reason why I have a lot of mixed feelings about R8 is that it's one of the few cameras on the list that is not stabilized. So there's no in-body image stabilization, which honestly sucks, but <laughs> in case of Canon, the, 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 the solution is that a lot of their lenses um, are image stabilized. So if you want a handheld video image stabilization, then definitely make sure to invest in image stabilized lens and then it works flawlessly. I, I, I mean, really like image stabilization in lens in case of Canon, it's really good. So if you're looking for a solution like that, you're stuck with image stabilized lens. In other case scenario, it's a great camera also to put on gimbal. Okay, so that's a complete list of cameras that I recommend and I tested and I worked with them and I have them in my home uh, or in the studio. So in any case, those cameras are really good to start with. There's a honorable, honorable mention and I cannot, uh, you know, skip this camera, which is Canon R6 Mark II. It's a little more expensive than the rest of competitors on that list. Um, maybe comparable with Sony 7 Mark IV, but I think it's still a little bit more expensive. However, it's a great piece of tech. It's image stabilized in comparison, like in, in opposition, in opposition, in, you know, in contrast, oh, in contrast to R8, but um, it's generally a very, very good camera. It's a little bigger, a little bulkier, a little heavier, but still uh, great autofocus system, great dynamic range, great colors, touch screen and everything that, you know, is, is kind of makes like Canon system stand out is there. The only downside, less lenses because RF uh, mount is still locked to uh, Canon uh, lenses only, but we hope that will change in future. However, if you're looking for the like no limits, no creative limits camera from Canon system, so what I mean with image in body stabilization, then you should consider R6 Mark II. Okay guys, I hope you like that list. If you feel like there are another cameras, full frame cameras to begin with, to start your uh, like trip, like trip, <laughs> photography trip or adventure photography and videography that I didn't mention and you are taking into consideration, please don't forget to leave comments, thumbs up, subscribe, and I see you guys in the next one.